Welcome back to The Ticker. Uh, in 2020, there's a big battle going on in the networking space here as the battle for 5G heats up. And uh, today, Verizon out with the news that it is the first in the world to successfully complete an end-to-end -end, uh, from the core of the network to the far edge of the network, fully virtualized 5G data session in a live network, a big step ahead in the battle to roll out 5G nationwide. And here for more on what that means for the race in the 5G battle is Kyle Mulady, Verizon's chief a technology officer. And Kyle, obviously, uh, maybe a lot of people out there might not understand the importance of a step like this, but maybe back up and just give it to us uh, in a normalized sense of how big a step this is for rolling out 5G as Verizon intends to. Hey, thanks, Zach. I appreciate that. Um, I guess uh, VRAN is quite an esoteric term, if you will. <laughs> so let me uh, step back and tell you what it is a little bit. Um, when a you know When a device, a wireless device talks to the network, it talks to the network over what we call the radio access network. Uh, behind that is a core network that has a lot of the brains. But what we refer to as the RAN, or radio access network, is the thing that really communicates to the device itself. Uh, traditionally, these, uh, this gear has been developed by the likes of Ericsson, Nokia, uh, others. And typically, it's developed with a hardware and software combined together. So you get a, one package of, um, of equipment and we deploy that out into the uh, into the world, and that's how that's what makes the cell phones work. Um, yeah. However, it's kind of a bit of an archaic model, and what we've done here with uh, our VRAN effort was we basically virtualized the radio network, and really all it is is nothing more than um, disaggregating the hardware from the software. So now it's easier for us to develop software, and we can do it much quicker. And what it really means at the end of the day, we'll be able to deploy technologies uh, much quicker and put features out there that our customers will enjoy in uh, a, a lot faster than we would have had in the previous generations of this technology. Yeah, and it helps partners uh, you know, latch on and develop technology here as well. We've already seen that with Verizon efforts uh, with Amazon Web Services here too, uh, before in, in rolling out 5G efforts in, in Boston, as well as the Bay. But when we talk about this, I mean, you guys have guided to 5G rollout here in the back half of 2020. Reaching this step now, though, what does that say about your confidence in the timeline here to roll out faster speeds to enable some of the crazy technologies we're talking about? I mean, we, we feel I mean, we feel really good. We're on plan. Uh, the way we look at it is there's two different tracks we're working. We're working on the technology track. And I'm very proud of our engineers and our partners that we've been working with. To We continue to have a cadence of new things that we're doing, frankly, world's first. Uh, we're learning the technology. We're pushing the envelope on the technology. We continue to do that. We'll continue to do that for a foreseeable future. But we're also deploying all of the hardware, software, and network uh, capability to more and more cities. Uh, we are on track for our nationwide deployment later this year, and I'm sure you will be hearing a lot about that uh, in the coming months. Yeah, we've seen some cool examples, too. I mean, just last weekend, you guys uh, teamed up with an AR, a front row AR experience at the Indy 500, this technology is enabling. That was pretty cool. When we think about all the battles going on here, obviously other networks working on 5G technology as well. You know, we've seen the battle there. Uh, some people saying, look, that's not real 5G. Verizon's taking the approach of, of really building out the network here. So what is the difference in maybe saying we're going to take our time to build this out to make sure we're delivering a true 5G experience versus what you're seeing uh, maybe competitors working on right now? And why is it worth the extra effort? Yeah, well, uh you know, I'm not sure we're taking our time. I think we've approached it from a different angle. We've approached it from, you know, 5G, the way we're building it with uh, ultra wideband, with millimeter wave technology, tons and tons of bandwidth along with the 5G spec is really going to be the game changer. Uh, it's not going to be slightly better than 4G. What it is going to be is a game changing technology. So we've been focusing our technology development efforts really on that part of, uh, of the ecosystem. And like I said, really proud of our engineers while uh, we're out doing this work with a virtualized core. Um, we're also out doing new use cases at the Indy 500 and allowing people to see uh, really what's possible with 5G ultra wideband uh, via that portal at the Indy 500, where it really felt like you were right on pit row and you're able to move around and see everything that's going on. We really think experience like that uh, is only going to intensify uh, and accelerate due to the work we're doing to really push the envelope on technology 4G ultra wideband. Yeah, and today, as today's uh, announcement there uh, kind of signifies there, uh, we're moving along on that timeline there. But Kyle Mulady, Verizon Chief Technology Officer, appreciate you uh, bringing us that explanation uh, and unpacking 
what it means in the 5G race. Appreciate it. Thanks. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.